up and say, oh yeah, Gigi was wrong. No, she wasn't wrong. She was right. She was right. What's going on, YouTube? You know what? Let me put on my sweater because I seen my elbows the last time. Mm. Oh my God, you look the best. Oh, that's what you learned about your elbows? Yes, they were so ashy. Do you I'm, own lotion? I do, bitch, don't do it. <laughs> I'm just saying, I just noticed I've never seen no lotion. I got enough here. stuff in here. Yeah. You got enough liquor bottles, that's for damn sure. Okay. Well, that's <laughs> enough. My and guess, some over there. Oh my God. When <laughs> guests come, that's what they do. They're supposed to bring a bottle. Lord have mercy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm ready, y'all. I'm sorry. Jesus, have mercy. Enough liquor bottles. What's going on, YouTube? It's Kevin and Mikel. We are back with a new video. I hope you guys have had a great weekend. I hope some of you guys who got that 1400, you know, send some of it to the side. Don't go spend it all in one place. You, and what did you do? Nothing. I'm just, uh, just, just we're not doing nothing with that money. Well, I'm, I'm still waiting. Money. I'm waiting for mine to come. Um, so, what's going on? So, when I get this, just want to sit there, you know, or maybe I'll do something this summer. Because I want to go somewhere. I don't want to be. In Philly, I do want to do something fun. Maybe take two trips during the summer. Uh -huh. um, that's what I plan on doing. That's what I plan, not even, I should do quotation, plan on doing. Um, what has been going on? It's been it's been a great weekend. Um, I'm going to say something. I want you guys to click that like button. That's the thumbs up button. I want to see this video get over a thousand likes. So everybody at home, if you're on your phone, there's a like button. If you're on your computer, there's a like button. If you're on your video game system, there is a like button. If you're watching this during the chat, close the chat, click the like button, then go back to the chat. So, um, yeah, just click the like button. Uh, a lot of stuff has been happening um, over the weekend. Kirk Franklin. We're going to start with him, and then we're going to get into the Ravens, all of that stuff. I mean, he's, he is music royalty. Uh, Kirk Franklin got into it with his son. His son thought it would be a good idea. Man, mind you, his 33... Yeah, I need a shot. His 33-year-old son posted this to his Instagram. It, I'm about to get on live. Is that okay? And yes, that's okay. fine. Kirk Franklin's 33-year-old son gets on Instagram and posts their altercation of them going back and forth. And Kirk Franklin was calling his son a bitch-ass nigga. And all this and that. And I think his son was disrespecting him back. Like, I dare you. And you ain't something. I don't remember all that was said. All I know is, I didn't feel like Kirk Franklin was in the wrong at all. I didn't I didn't feel bad. Like, oh my God. Why? I got something that'll hold that up. Oh, Why yeah. Kirk Franklin yeah. act like that? Right? Yeah. Because <laughs> I was struggling. Why Kirk Franklin do that? He wrong. He's supposed to be a man of God. He don't talk like that. Let me tell you something. You know how many men and women of God go up in church, give God the honor, glory, and praise, and then will still beat your ass when you get out of church for you fucking up somewhere? You know how many people cuss people <laughs> out in church? Yeah, I will bring your mom neck up in you. Don't get embarrassed, okay? Yeah. How many of those, how many of us has been on the end of that at church or outside of church? Five minutes after leaving the church, and you know I don't have <laughs> no, no picks of location. <laughs> I had to get somebody together yesterday at church. Yes, I did. Somebody that I do not like, they do not like me, and I do not like them. And I'm just going to tell y'all, I know I was wrong. Mm -hmm. I was wrong. I know I was wrong. But it felt good because I know you don't like me, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I don't like you. So we were sitting there right before service got, and they come walking by. So, you know, they came walking back towards me as I'm sitting there. So somebody sitting there, oh, good morning, good morning. So I'm... Ooh. So I hear everybody else say good morning. So then all of a sudden I so good morning. I said, Oh, good morning. So then I said, Oh, I didn't even know you was talking to me because you don't never speak. So the whole Ooh. section got quiet. Oh, 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 I speak every time I said, No, you don't. Oh, yes, I do. As soon as they start, went to go to explain this stuff. Yes, I, I said, Oh, hey, good mother, good morning, mother bonds. Oh my god. You did that. Yes, I, I swear to God I did. Don't fucking play with me. Kevin, I'm the same way everywhere I go. <laughs> don't play with me. Yeah. I don't like you, and you don't like me. <laughs> so we're going to keep it like that. I don't give a fuck if we are in church. Because I wouldn't invite you to a dog show mm. if we wasn't in church. Shit, old lady. I don't like the whole family. Oh I cussed the daughter God. out. I cussed the uncle out. I cussed her boyfriend out. 
The boyfriend and the uncle speak now. Okay. <laughs> but them, I don't like them. Wow. Yeah. Who the fuck <laughs> to play with me? <laughs> you are. You man. think you. Good boy. Did you tap me? Mm. I was going to say something about that. Like, did you just tap me? Mm. And we're going through COVID? Mm. Even though, you know, but still, right. tap, put your hands on me. <laughs> you know I wasn't saying good morning back. She should've just kept you should have just kept it moving. You knew I wasn't going to speak back. Then yeah. I was mad that I did speak back. But mm. it caught me off guard. But something said, Mikhail, say it. It's yes. wrong, but say it. Yes. Say it. I had a lady talking about you like mm. that in church. <laughs> Come on, fuck. <laughs> I don't fucking like you. We had an event at my church one um, a few years ago, and my pastor wanted me to MC. But I, it, 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 me MCing, it, it required me to work with them. Right. And 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 my pastor's wife said, "I know you don't like them, but can you just do this?" Because everybody in the church know I don't like them. Because I've made it abundantly clear mm -hmm. that I don't like you. <laughs> church meetings. Oh, I don't like them. Because they're nasty and they're ignorant. And anybody who knows me knows that I can talk and have a good time with anybody. But like my dad says this about me all the time. My dad says, you are one person that I know you are very observant of people <laughs> and you know how to. And that is me. I can talk to anybody. But when I see that energy in you and I see something about you, you know what I mean? Like, like, for instance, I've been around a lot of your friends. There's really not one of your friends that I don't like now. One of them is I think is goofy as hell. And I think you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. But I but. I don't dislike, you know what I mean? Like, I don't dislike, they, I don't have a problem with any of your friends. I just think that one of them is goofy as hell. But if it's somebody that I don't like, <laughs> there's a reason why I don't like you. <laughs> I mean, and, you know, I, 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 they did, this particular person did something too a few years ago, and it got back to me, and I was just like, oh, did they? Oh, okay. Yeah, I get it, because it's somebody, like, when I come to work and I tap myself in, normally, whoever the security guard is, mm -hmm. I say hello. Right. But this guard yeah. never speaks. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, you know, I say, fuck that. I'm uh -huh. not speaking to him because I heard him speak to somebody else. Uh -huh. I say, fuck him. I'm not speaking to him no more. Uh -huh. I tap my badge and I keep on going. Uh -huh. You know, and then there's one, oh my God, it's one there I really can't stand because he's reminding me of my brother. <laughs> oh, do you have your badge? Do you have this? Do you have that? Do you... Uh -huh. Listen, yeah. we only hit that one time. I said, he ain't ever have to worry about me speaking to him again. Right. And then I was like, oh, you want to be a smart ass today? He's like, oh, you didn't tap in. You're supposed to tap in every time you come in, in and out the building. Then I found out he had got cursed out, and that's why he started, you know, saying stuff. Because I thought he was trying to be smart. But it's all good now. You know, I don't have to right. speak to people. It's, even some people at work. Yeah, it's it's like that. Every like, some The older I get, the more I realize there's some family members that I'd be like, listen, we family, but I do not need to speak to you. My mom. <laughs> or, or have a long, drag up conversation. Or have a long, drag up conversation because nothing to fucking talk about. <laughs> it really isn't. <laughs> Okay, it's really not to talk about. It. I heard my mom talking to my aunt. <coughs> Excuse me. Like a few weeks ago, I heard, I overheard my mom talking to my aunt, and um, my my aunt must have asked my mom how I felt about somebody in the family. Cause you remember that incident a few years ago I had on my trip when one of my aunts had tried me on my trip, and I had to get her together with. I don't. I know I told you. Yeah, this I, is a while ago. Yeah, I had to get her together. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then she called herself calling my mom, telling on me. I said, excuse me, <laughs> first of all, I'm 30 something years old. What do you think, what do you think my mom's going to do to me? <laughs> okay. Are, are you crazy? So I don't really fuck with her. Like, I mean, I, we speak, but she know I don't fuck with her. She actually told one of my cousins, and one of my cousins called me and told me. Was like, oh, well, what happened with you? Because like, she told me. Da -da -da, so whatever case it be. So my aunt must have asked my mom how I felt about somebody else in the family. <laughs> so, because my aunt was being messy. So she must have asked her how I felt about somebody else in the family. So my mom said, I heard my mom say, oh, well, you know, Mikkel, um, if he, if he, if he's feeling you, he's feeling you. And if he's not feeling you, then that's the end of you. And so I heard my mom say, and I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, because once Mikkel's done with you, he's done with you. And that's how I am. Once I'm done with you, I'm done with you. Do not think that you're going to have a round two with me. Because if I'm done with you for good, that means that you did something that really bothered me. And that's the end of that. And so, yes, I have a family member that I would see you in the street and I'd walk right past you like I don't know you. Mm, mm, mm. Because you did, and you know what you're talking, you know who I'm talking mm, about. Because mm, mm. you did me dirty. Yes, 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 yes. And yes. you could never. Mm. Never. <laughs> you could never. And I so, told his father, I said, your son could never, ever 
ever again. You remember that day when Dad mm-hmm. called me? You could never. His son, you. And if you want to take up for your son, you'll be in the same boat with him too. <laughs> watch it. So, yeah, so Kirk Franklin, he got into it with his son. I don't know what the argument was about or, you know, anything like that. But if his son thought that, you know, people were going to turn on Kirk Franklin because no. he's cursing, no, it didn't happen. Most people curse the son out and tell him he need to get his shit together. Yeah. Oh, but there are people defending the son. Yeah. And then they're trying to make it. You know what's so crazy to me, Kevin, is that there are people defending the son. I actually unfollowed a few people on Facebook because of this. They're defending the son, but then they're trying to flip it as if the son is a child. They're trying, to, they're trying to use the words, oh, his child, and oh, somebody just said something about underage. And I'm like, wait a minute, when did 33 become underage? Because right. I, what, did I miss something? I, like, I don't understand, when did it become, some, a few people have been posted, oh, oh, you know, yeah, it's not right to disrespect your parents, but let's not normalize your parents talking to your kids like this. And I'm thinking to myself, when, when? Let's not normalize kids recording their parents and posting on the internet. Right. When did we start normalizing yeah, that? That was a private conversation. conversation. I, I'll never forget, one of my cousins got her ass whooped one day when she went to school and told the counselor <laughs> that her father beat her. And the counselor called the school home and my cousin mm-hmm. said, you go to school telling people that your dad whooped you? She got her ass whooped again. Right. <laughs> like, you didn't get abused, you got a whooping because you mm-hmm. needed to get a whooping. <laughs> And she went to school and told the kid, oh, my God. I'm, it's, yeah, these schools now, all of a sudden, like, you get beat at home. They want to send people to yeah. your home. One time, Nina told them, if you want them, come and get them. Okay. Come take them. Come and get them. We get feed them. them. You see, we got two freezers. Yo, God. <laughs> <laughs> two freezers and a freezer. She cursed them out. <laughs> And I think yeah, y'all had a freezer in the basement at one point. Yes, yeah, yeah, refrigerator. Yes. A whole refrigerator in the basement, a freezer in the uh, near the dining room, a freezer in, in the kitchen, kitchen and, and another refrigerator. refrigerator. That was a lot of asses being wiped. Because that was a lot of food being ate. <laughs> yes. You know, so, you know, Kirk Franklin posted this apology video. I wasn't feeling it because I'm just like, you shouldn't have to apologize for a private conversation that you and your son was having. You didn't say anything that was out of the ordinary to me when a parent is getting their child together. Y'all know my mom will curse you out. Mm-hmm. Her and Nina had legendary arguments. Mm-hmm. You know, and Nina would get cursed out. And I never thought to be like, oh, let me record this and post this online and see what y'all going to say about that. No. I've you never... Stuff like that. I've never argued with my parents in my 35 years. I've had disagreements with my parents. But I knew how far to go. Mm-hmm. And I knew how far not to go. You know what I mean? So I think that a lot of people who were a lot of people who were um saying though uh there was somebody on Facebook that was saying, Oh, oh, people act like they never had arguments with their parents. I mean, parents need to know that you if you want to respect, you gotta give it. And I'm thinking to myself, what house did you grow up in mm-hmm. that you would dare tell your parent if you want respect, you gotta give it? I mean, this is, and these were black people on so Facebook saying this. And I'm thinking, like, I would not dare <laughs> tell my mother and father, if you want respect, you got to give it. I'll never forget, maybe about two years ago, we were all at um, my mom and dad's house. It was me, my mom, my dad, and my sister. And my dad needed help with something on the computer because he's not computer literate. So my sister was supposed to come over and help so she then all she got upset because she had to come over and help (laughs) and I knew she was upset (laughs) then while she was there she started getting real mouthy and she was getting mouthy with my dad because she could get away with you know with dads and they girl something I don't know what my dad said but my sister started raising her voice and she started getting loud, and then that's when I stepped in, and I said, oh, you got to go. And she looked at me, and my mom and dad got quiet. I said, you got to get out. And I told her, I said, let me tell you something. I ain't never talked to mommy and dad like that, and I'm older than you. <laughs> you got to go. <laughs> Before I punch you in your mouth. <laughs> now, we're going <laughs> to bring it on down. I understand your frustration. <laughs> But your tone is becoming a little disrespectful. 
And if I feel the disrespect, I know he feels it. So we're going to bring it on down. Okay, so you got to go. So she turned around and she left. And she left in tears, but <laughs> you got to know, don't do not do that. Because that's not how we were raised. We wasn't raised to, we can have disagreements with our parents, but we wasn't raised to start getting loud and nasty. Yes, my sister was right for feeling the way she feel because my mom and dad don't be listening when you tell them to write shit down. Mm -hmm. However, she started getting a little too loud and the loudness was getting, started bothering me. And I'm thinking to myself, Wait a minute, I don't ever remember talking to them like that. <laughs> Who do you think you are talking to them like that? And I'm older than you. I know you lost your mind. So I think Kirk Franklin's son, I don't know why Kirk Franklin cussed him out the way he did. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's his son. <laughs> Literally, his son. <laughs> so if his son did something that warranted him to get cussed out like that, then so be it. <laughs> yeah. Okay? That's between him and his son. Me. Kevin, everybody on this Instagram live, everybody on Facebook and Instagram should have never known about that conversation because Kirk Franklin's son should have never recorded it and then posted it online. I don't give a fuck what my mom and dad say to me. I'm never going to record them and then post it online. That's never going to end well. Mm -hmm. Never. You, you understand what I'm saying? Like that, some parents will, you do something like that to some parents, some parents will stop talking to you forever. Because that's a sign of betrayal. Because I look at it like this. If you will betray your mother and father, you'll betray anybody. Mm -hmm, that's true. And that's a betrayal of your parents. You can't tell me, oh, oh, yeah, well, my dad was wrong. But but you, my friend, I'll never betray you. How? Mm -hmm. How you how you saying that, that you won't? How ruthless yeah. you are. Yeah, how ruthless and you are. you thought you was going to take your dad down? Right. You you gonna take how you think that down? that's okay to betray your father, but me, your friend, oh, you telling me you'll never betray me. Something's wrong with that picture. I don't trust you. I don't trust you for the simple fact that you would betray your father. Mm -hmm. I don't trust you. No. Get the fuck away from me. You can't. No. No, that's your parent. You don't do that. You don't do that. You don't have a good relationship with your father? Fine. Keep that to yourself. But I don't need to know that you don't have a good relationship with your father. Just think of how many that. other conversations he done recorded of other people or other situations. How about it? He never released them. How about it? Mm. How about it? Mm. Oh, hello? Well, and Kirk Franklin really don't have to have no dealings with him anymore. He's 33. No, none he's at all. Ben did what he's supposed to do. Hopefully he did. You know, I don't know Kirk Franklin's whole life story. But I just think that it was wrong that he did that. And I'm glad that many, Kirk Franklin had more defenders than mm -hmm. I've seen anyone mm -hmm. that was upset about what he said to his son. Mm -hmm. um, and now he's talking about, yeah, now he's on social media talking about, oh, there's more to the story. He's ready to do an interview. Bye. <laughs> Well, guess what? You come to an interview on this fucking show so I can get you the fuck together. And if you think I'm going to pay you to do an interview, I'm going to lie and tell you how I am. But guess what? By the end of that interview, you won't be getting nothing from me but a check from one of my bank accounts that ain't got shit in it, okay? Mm, mm, mm. Well, you don't want to Because I, like I like to transfer funds. <laughs> right. I like to do it all the time. I'm thinking about closing my credit union because they're getting on my nerves. Mm, mm, mm. Baby! You want to get paid to do an interview. Well, guess what? Come on this show. <laughs> he ain't getting paid for me. I'll write, I'll write you out a nice check <laughs> that your ass can't cash. <laughs> okay? Literally. Literally <laughs> won't be able to cash. So, the 2021 <laughs> Grammy Awards was last night. It was the lowest rated Grammys in history with only 8.8 .8 million people watching. And um, I think that due to the pandemic, a lot of people said, you know what? I don't need to watch this award yeah. show. Um, and it I was, was one of them. Yeah, it was held in March. <laughs> Normally the Grammys come on in January, February, around the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't like it was that hyped, neither. It didn't get no. that much promo. Mm -hmm. um, I posted on Facebook the other day and said, I didn't realize this was Grammy weekend. Yeah, because it, it didn't get... You know, normally Grammy weekend, you got Clive Davis party. Mm -hmm. You got the new Rock Nation brunch. Mm -hmm. You ain't seen none of that popping off. You seen all, all that, yeah. Mm -hmm. no, no parties, no Vanity Fair, none of that. Like, nobody was nobody was hyped to, about the Grammys at all. Only the fans of, you know, who, who you a fan of. You might be, you know, like, okay, they nominated. I'm ready for the um, Grammys. I don't have that passion that I used to have for the Grammys. Like, I would do videos dedicated to nominations. I would do videos right after the award show and then do another video with Mikael. I don't even have that passion for music like that anymore because music has just 
drained me a whole lot. And it doesn't it doesn't take a lot of talent to just be out there and make songs and videos. Mm-hmm. It's not it's not nobody that gives me life like that. Um, so it, it has just been a turn off for music for me. Um, but I, I, I was, I was, I really enjoyed last night. At first, I thought like, "Ooh, I don't like this setup. I don't like how this show is." But once I was in there, I was in there, and I sat there a whole thirty, three hours and forty minutes that this fucking show was on. So that room that they had the tables and stuff in, was it like ten people in there? Like how was the, that? Um, the people that were nominated, they sat out there for the. Oh, nom- oh, okay. so those were just nominated people, okay. right? Okay, and got then it. you know, I guess you go to another area. And then the stage that they performed in was that's where you performed at. Was it any audience stage. members? In, up no, in there? it was no audience members. You probably had like your your team on the side, right, like, cheering you on. Okay, you no, know. but I was, I was, um, um, you know, in the beginning, I was like, "What is this shit?" Because Harry Styles started performing Watermelon Sugar, and actually, he could sing. I was like, "Okay," I never gave him the time of day, but uh-huh. the song was cute. Then um, Billie Eilish performed. And then this group called Haim or Haim, they perform. And I was like, okay. Like, they're getting all the boring acts out the way. Um, then, you know, they gave out the award and um, Megan Thee Stallion won. Oh, my God, she just made me so mad how the way she got. For me? That's is it for said? me? No, she didn't say it, but oh. the mask was just. Oh. She's just sitting there like, bitch, you just won. Get up. But I guess she wanted to sit in it because she did it twice. And I was getting mad. Oh, she won two Grammys. She won more than two. Oh. I think she won three. She won three Grammys last night. <laughs> wow. Three. I didn't know that. Yeah. I just thought she won the one with her and Beyonce. No, she won three. Yeah, she I didn't won, watch the show, so I don't know. She won Best Rap Song, Best Rap Performance, and the one uh, she won. The one with her and Beyonce was Best Rap what? They won Best Rap Song, Best Collaboration, and they won um, They won another one, but they won three Grammys. They Together. won three, yes. Wow. Three. I believe it was together. <coughs> three Grammys together. Somebody will let you know what it was. Three. But she won yes, three. three. Um, so yeah, she was she was just draining me with that. But I want but she got up there and she spoke. Oh, best and new artist. Best new artist. That's what she, that was the first award of the night, best new artist. And and I'm happy for her that she won that. And then I started thinking, like, well damn, has any rapper ever won? And then they let me know that of course Lauren Hill and um Chance the Rapper won before. So but she's the the first rapper of this generation to win Best New Artist. And this century to win Best New Artist. So congratulations to Megan Stallion. Her perf- Let me tell y'all something, right? I'm about to say BET. CBS waited <laughs> until after 10 p.m. to show Megan's performance. Mm. But I'm going to give it to her. She never disappoints when it comes to live performances. Mm-hmm. On any award show that she's on. Mm-hmm. From the set design to mm. the dances, like everything, Megan the Stallion is on fucking point. And when she was speaking, and when she was just talking about how much she loves Beyonce and how much Beyonce influences her, you could tell that it's no lie mm-hmm. because it's some work ethic behind these performances. It's not like, oh, I'm just going to get up there and I'm going to perform and that's going to be that. No, she put her heart out in there. And she had her ass out. She did what Megan does. And it was a great performance. And then Cardi B comes out. And Cardi B does her shit. And then her and Cardi B got together. And it turned into BET Uncut. But it was the Grammys Uncut. Because they up there dancing with each other. And they legs in between each other. And flipping each other over. I wasn't ready for all of that. But they did that shit. And they let them perform wet ass pussy. I mean, <laughs> it's the Grammys, but you know, you don't expect to see it, but this this is where music has come to, you know? I'm sure they wouldn't let Lil' Kim and Foxy Brown do that in a day, but the, those people had to crawl before these people could walk mm-hmm. and do that on the stage. Mm-hmm. And I didn't see anybody on my timeline offended by what they saw last night with that performance. Um, I think that uh, Bruno Mars... And Anderson Pop, they did great. They did they song like I like this this. They they got this new name or whatever for the group that they have, but I think he did a great job. Everybody like did a lot of everybody. Yeah, I, like I like that little group that they have. I think it's a little it's it's a dope little retro group. Yeah, I forgot the name, but yeah, and a group I never heard of, Black Pumas. 
I enjoyed their performance. And it's like the song that they perform, you can tell that, um, like when you hear it, you know that you've heard this song maybe shopping somewhere. Uh -huh. But I never thought that, okay, this is a song that's, um, first of all, it's from an album that's nominated for album of the year. It's record of the year or song of the year or probably both. But I really enjoyed that performance. A lot of the performances were good. So, like, nobody really, like, bored me. Even the tributes to those who passed, they did a great, a great job with that. <laughs> I think overall, it was great, but you, you just didn't have the audience. And that was the only thing missing from the show. You had, you had all genres of music there performing, doing what they do. It was great. It was just, it was, it was, it was great, but it didn't give you that. This is music biggest night because of the pandemic. Um, but Beyonce also made history. Her daughter made history. The second youngest artist to win a Grammy. Who's the youngest one? I don't know. Oh. It could have. I'm like, is it Michael Jackson? I don't know. But um, she, um, Beyonce won a. Um, Michael her, Jackson was older than her though when he, when became, he won his first Grammy. No, I'm saying when he even became famous. Yeah, he was older than her. Because when they did the Ed Sullivan show, I think he was only like ten. And he didn't oh. win no Grammy at that time. I wonder who it was then. Because Blue's only nine, right? right? She's not ten yet. No. So, yeah. So, it had to be, It was definitely not Michael Jackson. I wonder. I don't know. I, we got to find out. We got to find well, out. Well, let's go. Yeah. Alexa, who's the youngest person to ever win a Grammy? Here's something I found on the web. According to Steve Wayne at Just.com, one of the world's most successful Leanne Rhymes. Leanne Rhymes? I know she had that song Blue, but I don't think that that's. Oh, this says Leah P. Saul, but I don't know who the fuck that is. Yeah, me neither. Leanne Rhymes is the youngest individual winner. She was 14 years old when she won her first two awards in 1997. So mm -hmm. I remember that song, dude. They played that song everywhere. Yeah, so it was Leanne Rhymes at 14. Okay, yeah. but as an individual, but not as col collaborative okay. as, a, as another person. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So, Beyonce <laughs> won Best Music um, Video. She won Best Rap Song. She won Best Rap Music Video for which award? For um, Brown Skin Girls. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, best rap song, best rap performance, yeah. best R&B performance. I think she won four last night. Four. That got her up to 28. Yes. She won four Grammys last night. So then, like, she tied, and then she won. I think she that got, was so dope record. that her and her daughter won a Grammy for a song celebrating black women and black girls. Right. Like, I mean, I, I feel like you period. can't even get yeah. upset by that because it is a good song. Mm -hmm. um, it's like, I didn't think about it at first. I was just so excited like they won. But then I'm like, wait a minute. The song that they won for is like so dope because it's a song celebrating black girls. Like, yeah. you can't be upset about that. Like, wow, the Grammys actually awarded somebody for, <laughs> for celebrating and black I women. still remember when... Um, you know that moment with Kelly and Beyonce in that video. In that video, yeah. That was a beautiful moment. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you know we got the email this morning with all oh, so Beyonce won four four make no, that was last year. Wait, you got that Yeah. You got the email too? Yes. Oh. Yeah, That's, I read yeah, I got it too. I didn't know. I thought it was four Grammy she won, but I see three. So Brown Skin Girl Savage Best Rap Song, they're missing one. It's, she won four last night. She won four. She won four. So best Did rap. Did Beyonce already have 24 or 25 grand? So she had 24. And to last night, wait, wait, 25, 26, 27, 28. Yeah, 28. So she had 24 and now she's 28. Which is historic. Because um, no one, I, I think I think it's going to be beat soon. Yeah. Um, Someone like Taylor Swift. Yeah, yeah. You know. All right. Then, then let me... Okay, but the I fact that she has twenty eight Grammys, yes. I just think that that's dope. So in twenty years, records, yeah, in twenty no twenty three, four, twenty three, twenty four, ninety seven. Yeah, I'm well, I mean, I'm just yeah, I'm thinking about, just, yeah, I'm thinking about when just being out. Yeah, so you yeah, right. I hope they do something for first of all for twenty five years of Destiny's Child. I hope they do something 
Um, cause that that that's historic. We're and about music this year or next year? Next year. Um, we can't let that go by. Cause I mean, we still they still celebrate the Supremes, and they was out since the '60s, and you know they always do something. I, I was kind of disappointed they didn't do nothing for Mary Wilson and and and, and with her being in the Supremes mm-hmm. for so long. Um, but it, it is what it is. You can't get everything that you want. Um, but they did do that nice tribute to Little Richard with um, Bruno Mars. He did it fantastic. Um, yeah, so Beyonce has the, the 28 Grammys. The thing with Taylor Swift, I just don't... Like, I like her pop stuff, but I don't like her country music. I don't like this folklore era. I don't like... I just don't like it. And people might say, oh, you just... You just not trying to be open. It's like you can try to listen to stuff, but it's just not. It's just not for me. Mm-hmm. Um, like they make it seem like she's like the best songwriter. I think the the hands down one of the best songwriters is Mariah Carey. Um, I just I'm just not feeling it for Taylor, and just to know that the music that she's winning album of the year for, can you put that up against? Lemonade, can you put that up against the Beyonce album and say like, okay, like, yeah, this is album of the year where this is this is this is better and this is why Beyonce didn't get it because Beyonce do stuff like this, like it just it just makes me upset that that's the main Grammy that has eluded her career is album of the year. She's never won it. Now I know it's tough when you go up against Adele because Adele makes great music, but damn, like it really do make you think like Adele said. What does Beyonce have to do to win album of the year? Right. And I'm still thinking that. Like, I just think that Beyonce should her focus shouldn't even be trying to win a Grammy. But it's still, like, yes, we celebrate these Grammys, but Beyonce only win those categories and mainly R&B categories. They don't want to give her the main categories all like that. So we'll give you something. We'll, give you, we'll let you make history, but we won't give you the main awards like that. We won't. It's been like over 10 years since she won in a main category. Over 10 years since Single Ladies. Yeah. But we'll give you R&B. We'll give you Best Urban. We'll give you all of that. But girl, I don't think we're going to give you the top one. That's why I don't really... I mean, I, I think it's dope that she got a Grammy. Just like I feel like it's dope when... If you win an Oscar, whether it's for the, you know, Best Actress or Best Actor, Best Supporting, whatever, it's an Oscar. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But... What you said, it still leaves a, a doubt in the back of my mind. You know, like, okay, the Grammys are this and they're that when it comes to her, but yet they have not given her these top awards in some years now. So it's like, well, <laughs> listen, what's really going on? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, we're going to put this right here. <laughs> And we want you to take it. But we ain't going to actually give it to you. We'll just put this right here. And you take what we get. But it's like, wait, what? Like, I don't get it. Because she's been well-deserving of it. Like, Lemonade was definitely a well-deserved Grammy. Mm -hmm. Like I said, even Adele said it when she won her award. When she won her award, what was that award she won for? Best album of the year. Best album of the year. And she said, you know, Beyonce, like... This should have went to Beyonce. Because even she knew it should have went to Beyonce. So a white woman said this should have gone to Beyonce. And she was right. It should have. I mean, like, hello? But it, 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 it leaves you to wonder, like, what's really going on? Like, who's really... I really want to see the Academy voters. Right. I want to see what they look like. Right. I want to see how many of us is in that room. And then that video that they pulled last night with the Grammys, like, sometimes we don't get it right. I think it's bullshit. Right. <laughs> like, like, come on, y'all know what y'all be doing. This is a, it's like it's an institution. Mm-hmm. They know exactly what they're doing. Like, how old are the people that's on this academy? Right. Like, I, I really want to know that. And how many of us are on there? Mm-hmm. How many of them really listen to the music that is that's being nominated? I don't think they listen to the music. Right. I just think they go, "Well, who's popular?" And say, "Oh, I think that they deserve to win." Right. Yeah, but that's not right. <laughs> yeah. That's not right. It's not right. But it's that's not the right politics at all. of it. It's not right at all. They need young people on there. Because I'm going to be honest with you. Best New Artist went to Meg Thee Stallion. But there were a lot of people that were upset by that. Not because 
it was her, but because they, a lot of people felt like Little Baby deserved that award. Little Baby has had an, a, a tremendous year. He has been doing his thing, and he I kind of performance last yeah, year. Yeah, I kind of agree with that too. Like, dang, I thought he was gonna get it too. Now, am I mad that Meg Thee Stallion got it? No, because I like Meg Thee Stallion, but I think that yeah, <laughs> I think if it was more of us and more young of us on that committee, he would have definitely won that award. But no, no, no. But I mean, even, even the, I think it was like eight people nominated. And people I've never heard of. Even yeah. Molly Cyrus' sister was in, um, included. And I didn't know she had a sister. Yeah. That made music. <laughs> <laughs> that made music. <laughs> I know a father used to make music. But I didn't know she had a sister made music. You know what? You know, Molly Cyrus. She really like, does. Like she, she like really, she. I actually have a few of her songs on my iPod. <laughs> she really does. She makes so good. <laughs> and we have her. Yeah, and we, yeah. But but it's like she's a guilty pleasure. Yes. <laughs> I would never tell y'all, yep. but I won't even tell y'all what songs I listen to. Well, I love yes, uh, Molly. She has some good songs. Right I don't know about that song. I know, I know that one, yeah. but I mean, that's one of my songs. I even like just the recent, like the country girl stuff, like. And she can sing. Yes. Like when you put her in a good element, she can sing. Mm -hmm. You can eliminate drugs. And right. You eliminate all that. She can sing. Like she really can. She did a performance a few years ago, I think at the Grammys, and she mm -hmm. was really good. But it's like, wow. Like you would. But then, I mean, her father is Billy Ray Cyrus. So right. it's like. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it was, you know, I, I like Lil Baby's performance last night. Um, Tra not Trayvon Martin's mother. Tamir's Rice's mother. Mm. Oh, she was upset with Tamika Mallory. Tamika um, Mallory is um, who, the, the girl who's who performed, like, well, who spoke last night right. during the performance. And she called her a clout chaser. She oh. was like, y'all not, she's like, you only in this for yourself. She was like, and I'm tired of y'all. Every time when something happens to a mother in America, y'all are there, but y'all only there for yourself. She called... The ambulance chasers, just like she said the same thing about um, Benjamin Crump. Oh, she went off in her her English. Oh my god! But yeah, she just went off. On Let me basically. tell you something. A few about a week or two ago, I can't remember who it was, whose relative it was, but they went off on Black Lives Matter, mm -hmm. and they said that the month of uh, Mike Brown's father, I think it was, said that the money that was raised by Black Lives Matter to help family members has not reached a family member. Mm -hmm. What is going on? Where's the money? What are y'all doing with the money? What's going on? It was a whole big thing about a week ago. I read the article and I was just like, wow. But yeah, because remember they was coming at people like um, Sean, what's his name? Sean, Sean uh, Fer not Ferguson. Sean, uh, Sean King. Yeah, Sean King. Mm -hmm. And a lot of other people, you mm -hmm. know, they want to know where this money going. Where is it going? I mean, every year it was a story about mm -hmm. it. Every year. About who? Uh, Sean, Sean King. King. Yeah. Where every is it going? Year. Yeah. See, you have to have, if you're going to be collecting money, you have to make sure that you have receipts to back up. Where, Like, for instance, uh, a few weeks ago, I raised money for Texas. Mm -hmm. I needed to make sure that, one, I was sending the money to a reputable place. So before I just sent it to anybody, I had to do some research because I wasn't 100% sure who to send it to. Right. Then I got in touch. Um, I knew. I said, wait a minute. Beyonce does a whistle name. I'll send it to her organization. I reached out. Her organization said, well, we don't collect. We don't take money. But we'll, I'll send you to an organization who does. Mm -hmm. And it was her pastor's organization, Bread of Life. So I said, oh, and that's who they partnered with. So I said, oh, well, that's perfect. You know, whatever the case may be. I made sure that when I sent them the money, that I made sure I screenshotted the emails mm -hmm. and all of that and posted it on my Instagram and Facebook so that everybody who donated could see that the money that was raised was sent to those people. You have to let people know that when you collect money from them, where it's going. Yeah. So that people don't think that you're just keeping their money. You can't just collect. And I started thinking, because I never thought about it, Kevin. I started thinking about, like, damn, Black Lives Matter do collect all this money. And where the fuck is it going? Mm -hmm. Who's funding it? Like, where is it going? Maybe somebody that works with Black Lives Matter will reach out and let us know. Let us know, because we don't know. And and to see Mike Brown's father come out like that and say, like, well, nobody's helped us. <laughs> nobody's reached, you know, nobody's helped us at all. And to have Tamir Rice's mother then come out last night and talk about Tamika Mallory. Mm -hmm. And it makes you... It makes you wonder, like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody talks a good game. 
then you you know it's good to have a good mouthpiece, but are you backing up that mouthpiece? Yeah, and and, and I kind of agree with um, Benjamin Crump being a um, oh yeah, okay. a, um, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't and this is the thing when them settlements come, he gets a piece of that. Mm -hmm. So that twenty seven million dollars that went to the family of George Floyd mm. this weekend, mm. he gets a cut of that. Mm. 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 And I'm upset by that. I'm upset at the settlement. Because all that says to me is those cops is gonna go free. Yeah. They're they gonna go free. And they, they always have they're gonna, slap, they gonna get a slap on the wrist. Especially the one who actually had his knee on George Floyd's neck. Right. Mm. 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 So George Floyd's life was worth twenty seven million dollars for a knee on his neck for nearly nine minutes. Mm. 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 That's what it says. That's exactly what it says. And I'll be thinking to myself, who is in the room with these families, Benjamin Crump, mm -hmm. <laughs> to tell them, like, why isn't anyone saying to them, no, do not settle. Don't settle. Mm -hmm. Even if you lose, still don't settle. Yeah. Because there is no price that you can put on the life of your level. Do not settle. Don't settle. Mm -hmm. But you got these lawyers like Benjamin Crump, like you said, they're in the room with these family members. Well, they probably be, don't. No, don't tell them to settle. Mm -hmm. I couldn't imagine something like that happened to a family member of mine and then me settling and then letting the people. No, uh -uh, I'll, listen, I'm going to fight until I'm dead in my grave. No, mm -mm. I'll go out broke before I settle for any amount of money like that, knowing that somebody killed my loved one. Yeah, and CNN is doing a story on a woman who um, sued the KKK and won. And of course she, you know, I was like, wait a minute, I didn't even hear about this. I've never heard of this lady before. It was and a long time ago, wasn't it? Yeah, like it happened like back in the 80s. Yeah. And that, organ that KKK Down organization south. went broke. And, and it, to her, it wasn't even about the money. She said, I don't want this money. Mm -hmm. I was never thinking about getting the money. Right. She was just suing in honor of her son. Mm -hmm. These people from the KKK went out and killed some black people just, just for kicks. He happened to be a victim, and they did what they did to him. Right. And um, she sued and won. And, 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 it's, and a lot of people don't realize it should never be about the money. It should be about justice for my loved one. I want to see you in jail for the rest of your life. I don't even want to see you get the electric chair or whatever. Because that's that's the easy way out. I want to see you in jail for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. I want to see you have to live behind bars for the rest of your life. For putting a knee, your knee on my loved one's neck. And choking them for nine minutes. While they beg for you to get up. I can't even imagine somebody having their knee on my neck. No. I can't, I, I can't imagine that. And him screaming out. And you still keep your knee on the neck. Mm -hmm. You still keep it on there. And you're going to settle for $27 million? What is the matter with these family members? They need to get new lawyers. Because their lawyers are telling them the wrong thing. I guess they feel like, you know, it's not it's nothing else that we can do except forget this money. And then, you know, George Floyd does have a daughter. So she could benefit. If they put that money away for her. Somebody already, I think it was Barbara Streisand who had set up a college fund for her. Oh, I forgot all yeah, about Barbara that. Yeah, Barbara Streisand did set up a... And of all people, all Barbara Streisand. Right. <laughs> she set up a college fund for her. Well, they could still and set that money And I think Disney put something up for... It was a lot of people that put up money for the little girl. Mm -hmm. I do know that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, she could benefit for that $27 million, But at the same time, it's like for me, no. Mm -mm. Keep your money. Keep your money. I'll take what Barbara Streisand sent me and then I'll... Keep your fucking money. No. <laughs> keep your money. So, so the Oscars, I mean, so the Grammys, I think they were a good show last night. Even though a limited amount of people watched. 8.8 million? 8.8 million people. I wonder if America Idol beat them in the ratings last night. I doubt it, though. And, the, oh, shout out to Duran. Because Duran won a Grammy last night. He was a part of the Grammy Award winning album, that. Bubba. And um, Kate Tronada won for Best Dance Recording. And uh, Best Dance Remix. So shout out to Duran. I'm really excited. Um, and the sky is the limit for you. And I'm hoping that your own work gets mm -hmm. nominated for Grammys too. And I'm hoping more people know in this coming year who he is. Because his voice has always been amazing to mm -hmm. me. And I need more people listening and knowing who he is. So congratulations to Duran. And to her, mm -hmm. she best Best record of the year. She's been for, nominated um, for Oscar I can't too. breathe. She's got nominated for an Oscar <laughs> this morning, which leads us to the Oscar nominations, and I'm trying to get to them. Um, but we we are in there. Three black men are nominated for best supporting actor. Um, no, two, three, two for best supporting actor, one for best actor. I thought it was more. 
It's more. It's more. Who? Daniel Kaluuya. Le- Who's Lakeith, the third? Lakeith Stanfield. Why can't I type Oscar? Child, just go to Google. There we go. It's, I, it was three. Because I was, I was in the store, and I was like, oh, my God, it's three. It's three black men nominated. We're gonna go. Um, I'm gonna go to the Academy's Instagram, Kevin. Okay. Just let me go there. Okay. It's all on their page. <laughs> I thought I had the page up, but I wasn't ready. Um. So which category do you want uh, me to go Best support. Oh, what's that? Best uh, what? Best supporting. Best supporting actor. I gotta find it, but it's all. They all have it on here. Oh, they posted it to the Instagram. They, yeah, they posted it to the Instagram story because I followed them. Um. This. The there you go. Right there. That was the actress. That's that was a, act, that was actor. That's supporting actress, wasn't it? it? No, that was uh, actor. Oh yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. Yes. But who's the third black guy? Leslie Odom Jr. Leslie Odom Jr. What does he look like? He's he was in Hamilton. You know he's from Philly. The ball guy from Power? No. Oh. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> the one the lawyer. No, he was one. recently like in a State Farm commercial. Singing. Oh yeah, him. Oh wow. What movie was he in? Uh, one night in Miami. I didn't know he was pushing forty. I thought he was younger than that. Black yeah, so really don't crack. Well, yeah, when you take care of one night in Miami, the uh, movie with uh, the, uh, about Martin, uh, not Martin Luther King, Muhammad Ali, Malcolm X, and all of them. He got nominated movies. for his role as Sam Cooke because that's who he played. I didn't know who he played, but I know he's nominated, and I was so happy. Yeah, he's. But played, I was just like, I oh didn't finish God. the movie because it was a little. Too long or boring? Not really dr- too long. It was just not really do- giving me what I wanted. But <laughs> I'm just being honest. It wasn't really giving me what I wanted. Mm-hmm. So I kind of s- didn't finish the movie. But shout out to him. Oh, I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah. So, so I didn't even pay attention to his name on there, Kevin. Wow. you. I, I'm glad you said that because I had no idea. I thought it was just the two of them. Uh, I had a chance to watch that Borat movie. Be, I think that girl's going to win um, Best Actress. Cool. The girl that's in the movie. Um, I don't even know her name. Her name is Maria Bakalova. Bakalova. She was in Borat. Now you wouldn't even think that Borat is something that would get nominated for like anything like that. For for, for best, best supporting best, actress. No, she's best actress. She's nominated for oh best no, supporting. I'm about to say no, supporting. She's not. I'm supporting. looking right at the. <laughs> I think she's gonna win that. Best supporting actress. Best supporting actress. She's gonna win that. Well, I do believe Andre Day is going to win for Best Actress. I hope so. I do. But I haven't watched No Mad Land. And I know Francis McDermott won an Oscar. Yeah, I think um, this is years uh, ago. I think this is Andre Day's year. I think I this is so. her year. I think this is her year. And I think that she's going to uh, get that Oscar. So, Best Picture for nomination for Best Pictures are The Father, Judas, and the Black Messiah, Mank, Benari, No Mad Land, Promising Young Woman, Sound of Metal. And the Trial of Chicago 7. I watched some of Judas and the Black Messiah, and that was good. I watched it on HBO Max. And um That was very good. I don't I didn't I didn't you know sometimes the movies can be triggering when you watch that. Well, um, you know, Lakeith said he had to go to therapy. Mm-hmm. He said that it was really um it really fucked with him playing that role. Mm-hmm. Um I didn't even know that. Yeah, he he did a whole thing about it. He talked about it. Um you know, him and Charlemagne had gotten to this. I didn't even know him and Charlemagne was beefing. Charlemagne called him out and said, oh, it should have been easy for you to play a snake because you are a snake. <laughs> oh, yeah, they were going back and forth on social media. I'm saying. It was really, I, I'm trying to figure out where did this all come from. Mm-hmm. And um, But he said that he had to go to therapy. Um, uh, I don't remember if he said while or after he was filming this film because it was that for him. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I was talking about it on my live last night and it was crazy because few people on Instagram this morning said, wow, you really predicted it. Half the people I named, well, actually all of them I named got nominated, except for Chadwick. I didn't name him, but everybody else, Viola, all of them, they all got nominated. Mm-hmm. And I said it on my live last night. But Lakeith, I really, going into Judas and the Black Messiah, I was focused on Daniel mm-hmm. because he was playing Fred Hampton. Right. But watching the film, you realize Lakeith, <laughs> For me, I don't know about I don't know about you or anybody else, but he was the standout in that film. Uh, Daniel did an awesome job playing Fred Hampton. I, I even watching the movie because you know Daniel is from London, I think, mm-hmm. and you know I'm thinking well maybe the way he's talking is because he's trying to. But then I had to 
YouTube Fred Hampton and was like, oh no, that's how Fred Hampton actually talked. Like that's how he really talked. And I was like, oh wow, he really got the way he talked mm -hmm. down pat too. Um, but then you realize like these guys were young because Fred Hampton was only 21 when he died. Mm -hmm. The guy that Lakeith played, he was like 20 or maybe 22. When he became an informant for the FBI, he was 17. And he stayed an informant for the FBI long after Fred Hampton had even got killed. He was the uh, informant to them all the way up until like 1973. And then you know the real guy, there's a documentary on him um, that they did. I can't think uh, of the name of it. It's at the tip of my tongue. But they did a documentary on the Black Panthers and they interviewed the guy that Lakeith played, the real informant. They interviewed him in 1988. And when it aired in January of 1989, when the special aired, he committed suicide. He ran into yeah. traffic and committed I suicide. I think I heard about mm -hmm. him. Yep. But um, he was trying to, he was trying to, in, the, in that documentary, the, the guy, the informant, was trying to say that he didn't really have anything to do with Fred Hampton's death. He was trying to clear his name, but by then, Child. it was the damage was already done. Mm -hmm. Like Everybody yeah. knew what it was. He had to relocate, change his name, and all this stuff. It was, yeah. And like, he actually looks like the real guy. Oh really? He really I got I gotta take yeah. I gotta take a look at these um the people from back in the day. But to know that the FBI killed someone so young. Yep. Like they were really killing people. Yeah. They probably still are. That's why I said that's why I said you know how we in this past two years there was this whole big thing about um taking down names of the Confederate people, these statues and stuff. And I said, well, what about Jagger Hoover? Mm -hmm. The FBI building his name after Jagger Hoover, and he was a known racist. He was a known anything. He was anti-black. Look what he did to Martin Luther King. Everywhere Martin Luther King went, hotel, whatever, he would have his hotel rooms bugged. And then when Martin Luther King was cheating on Coretta, he would send, like, the audios to Coretta Scott, for, and you know, or play it for her. Like, this man... The FBI building should not still be named J. Edgar Hoover Building. It just shouldn't be. Because we now know that this man was a known bigot. And well, a lot of them were at yeah. that time. But, I mean, if Some we t if we taking down Confederate stuff and, and, and renaming schools, then let's rename the FBI building. Because mm -hmm. it should not be called the J. Edgar Hoover FBI building. Right. <laughs> I understand why, because he was the longest serving, he was the first FBI director and the longest serving FBI, FBI director, but still. From the 30s to the 70s, right? To the 70s. No, from the 20s, before it was even 20s. called the FBI. Wow. Wow. He he served as a director for like over 40 years. Mm. And he served under like, mm, I want to say like five or six presidents. Like, they, you know, you could change the director, but none of the presidents ever changed it. They just kept them. And you and when you were the leader of the FBI, is for ten years or something like that. Um, now, oh, I don't see. I don't know that. See, I, I don't know. I guess back then it was no tenure, like mm -hmm. it was no time limit. Because for him to be from as long as he was, I think it was like from nineteen twenty four to like nineteen seventy two or something like that. I'm about to look. That's a long time. Yeah, that's a long time, Kevin, to be a um, director of any fucking thing. Well, we gonna we gonna get to the rest of these. We gotta skip through these because it's getting late. And, um, Anita Baker is asking you guys to not stream her music. She's trying to get her masters. Yeah. From 1924 to 1972. That's, a long That's almost time. 50 years yes. that he was the FBI director. Now, what dirt they got on <laughs> him? Oh, well, you know, he was gay. I didn't know that. Well, yeah, he was gay. He was. And they ain't spilled his tea? Uh -uh. Mm. He was, he was, he was, he was gay. He was a, a homosexual. Um, you know, back then, it was kind of like, you know. Um, but this was his, uh, that was his boyfriend. Mm. Yeah, he was gay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what? But back the then, that was like, fine. hush, hush. <laughs> the media wasn't like it is today. <laughs> so Anita wants y'all to stop streaming her music on all musical platforms. She's trying to get in control of her masters. She said she has signed a contract and that contract is over now the people who are in control of the contract don't want to hold up to the end of the bargain where she owns her music so she's asking mm. please do not stream her music i don't know because i've been listening to her music late, lately um well you, i guess we can go on um youtube and listen to it right that's not streaming i think it still counts oh, is it? On, i think oh, so because wow. they be because they um wow they get paid from that too well you know 
hopefully this campaign works for her because it worked for Dave Chappelle. Remember when Dave Chappelle asked people to stop mm -hmm. watching the Chappelle show until whatever yeah, he happened? He talked to CBS and everything. Yeah. And he ended up getting paid because mm -hmm. the type of contract he had, he didn't have to get paid for his um, show streaming. And he didn't think, he, he understood what type of contract he signed, but of course, he didn't think that was right. Mm -hmm. And he fought it. And he now getting paid. So HBO Max has the Chappelle show and Netflix has the um, Chappelle show. And he's getting paid for his work. Oh, that's right. And then yeah. don't really have to do nothing else. Yeah. No, you don't. <laughs> you don't really have to do that. That show nothing. was, oh my God. That show was a be... classic show. For the short time that it was on, mm -hmm. it was a classic show. That show was on when we were in high school. And I just remember the Yo, guys in high school. You was in high school when that was out? Oh. Well, I know I was in high school <laughs> when it was out because the guys in school used to always quote it. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, wow. And then I remember, I think I started watching it like the last season. And it was just like. I was upset because I had really gotten to it. And, I, and I, 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 I had the DVDs back in the day. Like, when they came, when they put them on DVD, I had them. Mm. Um, yeah, so don't stream, um, according to Anita Baker, um, the genius Aretha Franklin uh, miniseries that's being done by Nat Geo premieres March 21st. Uh, Aretha Franklin's granddaughter is holding a um, protest in Detroit. Um, she doesn't want nobody to watch it. Yeah. If, um, Movie. I don't know what's... Her what's, son came out and said something, too, about it, too. Listen, people are going to make movies. Mm -hmm. People are going to make documentaries, whether the family approves it or not. Um, I think it's time that Aretha's story be told. Like, I don't mind that there's a miniseries and a movie. I just want her story told the right way. Right. And I want it to be done right. Like, with great actors, people who can sing, people who can act and tell a story... And not like how Lifetime keeps throwing out all these fucking 10 Whitney Houston movies every year. Like, it needs to be a movie told so good, it doesn't need to be told. Like, anymore. what's love got to do with it? Right. <laughs> you don't need another Tina Turner no, movie. No, you don't. Because that movie was perfect. Okay. <laughs> Tina went on to still have more success, and you only still had that one movie. What's love got to do with it told me everything I need to know. <laughs> yes. So I, I walk. I welcome the mini series for Aretha Franklin. I welcome the mini uh, the movie for Aretha that's coming out in August. I don't want Jennifer and Cynthia to be going at it. Right. Jennifer, don't be talking sly. Right. And Cynthia, don't I think be she talking did say sly. Yeah. yeah, I heard she yeah, said uh, Yeah, because I'm doing the movie. Uh, yeah. yeah, don't do that. But you know what I think? I agree with you. But I think that the family feels some kind of way because Aretha was, um, she was. Trying to get this movie made mm -hmm. with Jennifer Hudson playing because Je Aretha handpicked Jennifer Hudson to play her, and then now y'all got this mini series coming out that Aretha mm -hmm. don't have nothing to do with, and that was what her son was saying when I was reading an article a few weeks ago where her son came out and said our family does not approve of this movie at all because we didn't have no nothing in this movie. Mm -hmm. Like my mother didn't have no say in it. The family didn't have no say in it, so we don't approve this movie. They're only approving the one that Jennifer Hudson. But is there's in. a way to get around by, with, with you know, instead of trying to hold a protest, why don't you do interviews? Talk about why you don't think people should watch it, or maybe try to come to an agreement with Nat Geo. Maybe Nat Geo was like, "Bitch, we tired of waiting," because this movie with <laughs> Jennifer was been out. Should been out, okay? Because they pushed it back. Mm -hmm. They did push it back. They did. Because it's supposed to come out last year. Yes, it's supposed to come out last year. And I was like, well, I figured like, well, damn, this Aretha movie never coming out because like all you can see is commercial, 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 mm -hmm. commercial, and then you've never heard it no more. Mm -hmm. Like you've seen the pictures with her and um, Marlon Wayans and all of that, and you can't see nothing. So how long should they hold on to it? Okay, we're going to watch both. I'm going to watch both. Right. I'm going to watch this. I'm not going to go to the movies, but I'll definitely watch it online. Like, I'm going to see both. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure they're both going to do Aretha Justice. Now, when I look at the pictures, I'm like, yes, Cynthia. Like, I see Aretha. When I look at Jennifer, I see Jennifer. But maybe when the movie comes out, I won't look at it as Jennifer Hudson playing Aretha Franklin. Maybe I will look at her as Aretha, but right now... That's not that's not how I feel. Mary J. Blige mm -hmm. said, you know, she really captured Aretha, but I'm looking at Jennifer Hudson. When I see her Cynthia, I'm seeing Aretha Franklin. The, the, the fro, the style, all of that. So I'll be, I'll be watching both. 
I don't want to compare them, but I know we will once both of them come out. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's that. Trey songs. People do anything when you got money. And, and yeah, remember when Donald Trump said that? Yeah, he was like, attention. when you have money, you can do anything. It's just, it's, it's, it's repulsive. <laughs> or, well, I hope I'm you said it word. right. It's really... It was nasty. It was disgusting. It, I didn't see the video. Yeah, he's spitting in But I don't get into stuff like that. So when I heard about it, I said, oh, well, I'll never watch it. Because mm-hmm. I'm not into spitting. Yeah. <laughs> not into that. They, and they was catching it and kissing. And then during COVID. Yeah. And he had COVID. <laughs> yeah, I heard. <laughs> he did. Because I remember when he announced it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you letting somebody who had COVID spit in your mouth. <laughs> I mean, bro. <laughs> Shut up, Kevin. Anyway, yeah, that was Trey Song. I mean, I, I see. I like but he's he been, a video. He just, he's been, yeah, well, you know, that, he has only fans. Yeah, but he ain't showing. He's that. not really showing anything, showing anything from the clips that I've seen on Twitter because, you know, people screenshot it and post it on Twitter. Mm-hmm. But he does have a video where some girl is sucking it, but you can't see it. No, you can see it. Uh, you can see his thing. You can't see his face, but he's talking in the video. He's moaning and telling her what to do, and you, it's him. Mm-hmm. Um, he didn't deny that. It, because we all knew it was him because he's talking in the video. And no, it's like he's sitting there and he's recording. So you see his penis and you see her Going sucking it. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, she could have. She he could have had somebody a little better because yeah. she wasn't as good. And I'm just be trying to figure out these guys be having access to all types of women, and then they be having the worst women sucking on them. So I'm just like. <laughs> Like, come on, y'all be having access to any woman, mm-hmm. but then y'all pick this one who don't use no spit when she's sucking, no nothing. <laughs> it's mm. not wet. It's not nothing. Mm. Or wet enough. Oh God! Don't tell the girls how you do it. <laughs> I'm just saying. I know how I like mine. I know how I like mine. And that's how you do it. All right. So, Sharon Osbourne. Oh, my God. No. We <laughs> cannot just skip over this. We're this gonna, we're, we'll see y'all on the podcast. Okay? okay. <laughs> we can't just skip over Sharon Osbourne. You better make sure you write it down. Yes, and I will. <laughs> and you spring breakers. Okay? <laughs> Anytime you, uh, they give us anything, y'all go over the line <laughs> habitually. <laughs> I see y'all down in Miami. I see y'all everywhere, just on vacation, no mask. Y'all think the pandemic is over? It is not over. Can everybody get vaccinated first? Like it always stalls and then something spikes it. We need to be careful. Wear a mask when you're out in public. Just, just, just stop doing. Like stop thinking that it's over. It's not over yet. We are not over yet. We're still getting over 50,000 people contracting it a day. And we're still at about 1,500 deaths a day. Stop thinking this is the time to just go out there and be around thousands and thousands of people with no mask and thinking that your immune system is just immune. Right. Come on. We got to do better. So we're going to go. But Sharon, we'll see your ass on Friday. You know, because I, I can't wait for the talk. Because you know they're on a hiatus. Yeah. What the fuck do y'all need to investigate? Yeah. She said what she said. She said what she said. And they're going to sit there and said. tell Cheryl. Cheryl oh, don't please don't cry. Don't cry. <laughs> Bitch, how did I should be the one crying. <laughs> oh, good <sure>, Joe. <laughs> really? Really? Got something for that ass. So we will see y'all this week. And please make sure y'all listen to the Scorpion Show podcast. Thank you for those who are listening. Um, what else I have to say? We will see you guys. I might have to come back with a video this week. Not just on Sharon, but just something. You know, something else. It's springtime. You know, I'll see y'all. Everybody stay safe. Wear your mask. Be good out here in these streets. And we will talk to y'all soon. Peace. Bye-bye.